the Pythagorean theorem. Our learning objective is to solve problems using the Pythagorean theorem and then to use the Pythagorean theorem to identify right triangles. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a peek at right triangles. The good news is Pythagorean theorem does not apply to any other kind of triangles except the right triangles. So you know, if it's a right triangle, your first thing to look for is, is the Pythagorean theorem going to solve this right triangle for me? So firstly, we have to take care of some vocabulary. So we need to make sure that, so go ahead and draw draw this triangle and label it on your paper. The box in the corner means that it's a 90 degree angle. Wherever you see the little block in a corner, that's our math language um, to indicate that it's 90 degrees. I love mathematicians. I study math for a living because I can appreciate instead of writing a 9 and a 0 and a little degree symbol, we just write a little box. So the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. side of the triangle. All the other sides are always going to be shorter than the hypotenuse. And then the leg is easy to remember because it's the one that's not the hypotenuse. So and in a triangle that's the other two sides. So the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, it's the longest side, and the leg is not the hypotenuse. And poor leg, there's two of them and they're interchangeable and they don't get their own names, they just get to be leg. You don't call them leg one and leg two, you just call them leg. It's very sad. Alright, so now technically the Pythagorean theorem is the relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That's all the Pythagorean theorem is. No, it's not scary. It's just a relationship. It's like going on a talk show. Dr. Phil is going to talk about the relationship. <laughs> Are you squared? You add it together with somebody else. Then you squared again. All right, so your book gives a really good detailed description of where the Pythagorean theorem comes from. And that's great. If you guys want to see that, please refer to chapter 10, section 1. And it tells you exactly all the math manipulations we get to prove the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to do it here because your book does a really good job and that would be wasting our time together. So the main potatoes of Pythagorean theorem is, I have if I have a right triangle, I call one of my legs B, I call the other leg A, and I call the hypotenuse C, and yes, the hypotenuse is always C. Then, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. see how that works. My recommendation for you guys is always draw the triangle, if, um, especially if it gives it in words. So what is the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle? So let's draw a right triangle. Hypotenuse is C with legs 
of lengths 9 and 12. So using the Pythagorean theorem and letting this guy be A and this guy is B, and going this is 9 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. C squared is C squared. 81 and 44. 144 is 225. And you guys, we've been doing solving squared, how we said solving quadratics all with you last week. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Square root of 225 is 15. Square root of c squared is c. And we know that c is equal to 15. We had written down last week that when we take the square root of things, we go plus or minus. But I love the Pythagorean theorem because he says you can't have a negative hypotenuse. That would be absolutely ridiculous. So, hypotenuse is positive. All right, so number two. So, but this is a, we did, in number one, we did the scenario where we had both legs and we were finding the hypotenuse. Now we're going to take a look at the scenario where we have a leg and a hypotenuse. And we want to find the missing leg. So let's identify this. I'm going to make our hypotenuse is C. 4 is going to be B and A is going to be, oh yeah, we don't know. We'll just keep it A for now, just for fun. So when we use Pythagorean theorem, we're going to substitute A. Yeah, we're not because we don't know him. We're going to substitute B for the number 4. And we're going to substitute C for the number 5. A squared, yeah, he's a poor little guy. Can't get simplified. 4 squared is 16. And 5 squared is 25. Now I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides so that I can solve for A. I get a squared equals 9. I love this part. It's like we're getting close to the end of a movie. If I know that a squared equals 9, what does a have to be? a squared is equal to 9. It is. It's 3. So we take the square root of both sides. And a is equal to 3. Not the negative 3 because it's the Pythagorean theorem. We're looking at side lengths. It's positive. Okay, so we talked about the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we have a right triangle, we can find the side lengths. But we're looking at the scenario where if we know the side lengths, we know the hypotenuse, we know each of the sides, we can use Pythagorean theorem to tell us if it's a right angle or not. So Go ahead and write down the converse to the Pythagorean theorem. If the triangle has side lengths a, b, and c, and a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle with a hypotenuse of length c. And the hardest part of this is going to be determining which one is the hypotenuse. And which one is the legs? So number three says, could the lengths 20, 47, and 52 millimeters be the side lengths of a right triangle? And explain. Please, my darlings. Anytime it says explain, you need to have a sentence there. Okay, so my options are 20, 47, and 52. Which is the biggest one? 52 is the biggest one. So 
So he gets to be the hypotenuse. So always draw a picture because it kind of organizes your brain into having a workable solution. So we're going to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we're going to plug in our numbers and see if this is a true statement. So we're doing a little test. 20 squared is 400. 47 squared is, calculating, calculating, 2209. 52 squared is, 2704. And we're going to see if these two guys are equal. So is 2209 plus 400 equal to 2704? So is 2609? equal to 2,704. Are these two values equal? So if I said, I'm going to take $2,704 from your account and replace it with $2,609, what would you think that would be? So this is not true. When you get a not true statement, that means it is not a right triangle. So let's explain using our sentences. Use our words. Use your words. Um, this is not a right triangle. Since 20 squared plus 47 squared is not equal to 52 squared. 